As a kid, you hear stories. Stories that stick with you forever. Stories that have passed, been passed down from generation to generation. Some call them myths, some call them folklore, other call them fake or made up. On this episode of Suburban Legends, we're going to take a, a look at a very old story, one that dates back to the 1800s, the tale of the goat man. From Maryland to Wisconsin to possibly right in your backyard, the goat man has been said to roam all over the United States. On this episode, we are going to focus on the Wisconsin origin of this mysterious creature and, now, and how the story has changed and will change again. This old story has been told by grandparents to grandchildren, from camp counselors to campers, from friend to friend. The story is never quite the same. The first known story to have been told took place right here in our backyard in West Bend. Right after the Civil War had ended, a husband and his wife were returning home traveling by horse and carriage. Right before dusk, their wheel broke. The husband headed to the nearest town to get a new wheel to carry on. When the husband didn't return by dark, the wife decided to take a look around with nothing to be found, she decided to go back to the carriage and go to sleep. When day broke, she was, left to a, she was said to have left the carriage and look again, but only to find her husband hanging from a tree torn to shreds. This was just the beginning of the tale of the goat man. The story has been twisted and turned over the years. We're going to take a look at how one team decided to take it upon themselves to show the story in a new way. Then we will be talking to J. Nathan Couch, the author of the book, Goatman, Flesh or Folklore, to shed some light on this dark story. That's kind of the basics of it, right? Survive. It's, and it was always meant to be a really simple kind of idea. You know, it doesn't involve crafting or anything else like that. It's really about, you know, get, get out of here as quickly as possible these beautiful oranges and golds and then the shadows are very like purple and deep and you just get this kind of like magical lighting in the fall right you know you're trying to escape this thing that's always hunting you it's more about escaping really than necessarily ever beating this thing it's like a supernatural entity it was um, never really clear, like, was this thing a, supposed to be something living, something not living? You know, is it, is it undead? Is it a demon? Is it, like, something from time forgotten? Hi, I'm Dan Rakowski, and I'm the lead game designer on The Goat Man Is Nigh, a game that we're developing over at Serenum Digital. The, the idea behind it is that it, it was the beginning kind of game that we were going to start with. It's kind of like a lover's lane story uh, where, you know, it's where kids go and then, you know, tragedy strikes and whatnot, but it goes way back to the Civil War and everything. The game is obviously, um, you know, it uses that core story of the Go Man of Hogs Back Road as its beginning point. It naturally kind of creates this idea of a, a survival game. Where we kind of start to change the story is that uh, Sarah was gifted as a wedding present this land in in Wisconsin, right, by her uncle Giuseppe, right. So her uncle Giuseppe kind of gave her this land, and um, her husband's very enthusiastic about trying to go ahead and farm the land, start a start a homestead um, on this on this piece of property because they're just starting out. They're a young couple; they don't have much going on, right? So the first like five minutes of the game is actually steering your your horse-drawn cart along the ridge, which is Hogsback Road, and they call it Hogsback Road if you don't know because it kind of undulates. It goes up and down, up and down these eskers that um, exist around that area of Wisconsin. So. 
you're going along uh, with that route. Sarah doesn't, Sarah's a city girl, right? She's kind of from the Milwaukee area or Chicago area. Um, and so she has no interest in uh, actually going on in farming <laughs> at all. But it's her husband that's like, well, this is an awesome opportunity, basically. You know, we should we should take it or whatever. And she's very hesitant. And you find this all out as you're driving the horse-drawn cart with all of your belongings to go start your life. Of course, something goes wrong. Um, you know, the basically one of the cart wheels kind of kachunk falls off and then he has to leave his new bride to go to go back and then you spend the evening in the cart right so um basically light a fire the sun is dimming um there's kind of a narrative sequence that happens in here where you know she hears she hears the noise there's some sort of a dark figure kind of roaming around the outskirts of where you can see in the in the firelight and then it disappears she's actually sleeping on top of this this carriage right underneath the tarp and um then the then she hears this kind of scratching along the glass of the the carriage below her right and so she looks and the doors like slightly ajar it's just opened up as if something's like reaching in and looking for her it smells her and knows that she's around can't find her and then the next thing you know is that like she pulls her pistol very slowly out and ends up popping up and trying to fire at something and it disappears it's just nowhere to be found right can't really sleep the rest of the night and then that's where the you know the third person perspective gameplay really starts you hop down off of the top of your carriage you're gonna go find your husband you know probably give him an earful for his insane idea to come out here in the first place when you didn't want to anyway and but you have to understand you know she's a very although she's a city girl she's very hardened right she probably like grew up on on a farm or a homestead and she can take care of herself and that's you know so she's this strong female lead and basically you kind of leave that area where you've made camp for the evening go out and start venturing for a way out because the path no longer um the path no longer follows where you just came from something almost like mysteriously changed about the path it doesn't lead to where it once did right so it's kind of like this twilight zony kind of moment where you're like something strange about this area like it's it's like constantly kind of changing a bit so you leave you go on and um you yeah that's where the adventure kind of starts how do you make this thing um fit the folklore of the the funny little goat man kind of idea but then like add this really jarring moment to it when it first appears right where it like shows up and it it wants to like kill your character right so it can't be funny at that moment it has to be like this terrifying kind of um thing and goats are not by nature i think terrifying looking things so you know you have to kind of like exaggerate quite a bit on it but it there was a kind of a moment where we we we're, I was trying to decide, you know, do you make it bipedal or do you make it kind of this, um, you know, like uh, centaur kind of thing, right? And I think that was the route that we took. It's got, you know, the four legs of the goat and kind of the top half is is like the more humanesque part minus the head and the claws and stuff. But I that was just a decision because we needed to twist it even further, you know, by having it not just a, a man that is a goat it kind of like starts bringing into this like ultra strange territory where it's like you know holy cow this thing's like just completely not natural kind of thing so uh, it wasn't a legend that you know had come from any like recent times right and that so it, it had this kind of heavy weight to it to be almost kind of like ancient for the for Milwaukee or not Milwaukee ancient for like wisconsin at least right like you're talking about you know 150 160 years ago at this point so it was kind of a cool idea that um you know went back to the civil war era it came the story like kind of pops right out of that the end of the civil war and it so it's got this kind of fun fantasy lore to it from a time past and kind of the victorian area as well you know so it's it's coming up into this moment in time where you know technology's kind of picking up 
um and but it's like right on the cusp of it it's right before we have like you know automobiles and everything else like that but we just you know so it's got these opportunities in the story to you know play with it and if you want to get creative with it with which we eventually did you know we added like some steampunk elements and things like that in moments um just to kind of it's this great era where um you know steam is the primary like thing that's like running technology so you can you can get a little fantastical with it while still like you know honoring that era right and it's it's just kind of a cool legend that it goes back that far um and i think that's maybe why it's as persistent of a story as it is just because it's got it had enough time to like enter into the consciousness of everybody in the you know the germantown hubertus north lake obviously it's kind of spread um but you know I, the other thing is that it was just a really quirky story that it was a you know it, it was again that common like lover's lane horror story but it was this time done with you know kind of this weird goat man creature that like lives in the woods an interesting way to put words into a vision now here with me is j nathan couch the author of goat man flesh or folklore how you doing nathan doing great 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 to have you here um so uh, what got you interested in urban legends? Well, I grew up in the mountains of northeast Georgia, kind of the foothills of Appalachia, and uh, it was a family who, I don't know if they necessarily believed in everything they talked about, but they loved talking about like UFO sightings and, you know, Cherokee curses and, and, and that whole sort of thing. And it terrified me. <laughs> and uh, somewhere along the line, it turned into fascination. And I started reading all the books I could get and ingesting all the, the television specials I could get. And, and then that eventually led to a serious research into phenomena. And then I learned about Goatman when I moved uh, to Wisconsin about uh, 15 years ago or so. And it was such an incredible sounding thing. I wanted to know everything I could about it as soon as I heard about it. What, what in particular uh, piqued your interest about the Goatman? Well, essentially, it's described as looking like something straight out of uh, Greek and Roman mythology. And to hear that something like that is said to be roaming around the Midwest immediately as an attention grabber. So, uh, yeah, I, I set out some research to try to find out as much about the Wisconsin version as I could. And you know, that turned into researching the phenomena all across the country. Right. And so, so what made you want to write a whole book about this story? Well, essentially, when I was reading about all this stuff, uh, there was no overview of the overall phenomena. There was stuff in regional books from Wisconsin. There was stuff in regional books from Kentucky and Texas and Maryland and California. But none of those locations seemed to really know about the stories in the other locations. So I wanted to kind of put all this together uh, try to talk to people who have connections to it and really see what the big picture is concerning it. Okay. Right. It's very interesting. I've, this is the first I've actually heard of the goat man is, you know, coming on to this and meeting you. And it's very, very fascinating. Uh, you know, coming from Wisconsin my whole life, I can't believe I've never heard of it. Um, yeah. He's definitely a more of an obscure thing compared to, say, Bigfoot or extraterrestrials or right. something along those lines. Yeah. Right. Um, well, could you tell us about the mythology kind of behind the goat man? Uh, sure. Well, the the version uh, of the story told most often here in Wisconsin uh, involves uh, the Civil War era and uh, this couple has a breakdown of, of their carriage while they're traveling Hogsback Road. Then uh, it, it ties in with the whole dead boyfriend urban legends that people who are familiar with folklore might know uh, where uh, the husband goes off to get help to repair the vehicle and uh, the wife stays there. He doesn't return. She sees something terrifying out in the shadows, in this case, goat man. And then when morning comes, she eventually finds her husband's body. I believe in the story uh, that I've just referenced, he's uh, hung up in a tree, his throat torn out. It's a pretty grisly uh, urban legend. <laughs> Sounds like it. I've, I've... I, I, this is just all news to me. I, 
now I'm kind of scared to go out. I, I've always kind of been into nature, and now I'm just worried I'm going to run into this, this goat man. Um, so in your book, you write about sightings, and, and um, one of them happens in Kewaskum. Is there any way you can expand on that? That's right. Uh, the Kewaskum version is a little different, whereas uh, it involves uh, a drunk and abusive man who uh, beats his animals and beats his wife, and one night he's, he's really on a tear, and he, he murders his wife, and he's still angry, and he goes out and begins beating the animals, and one of the goats catches him with the, hor with the horns that it has there and forces him, well, it doesn't force him, it causes him to bleed out. And uh, he dies there in the woods, and in that version of the story says he comes back as some kind of human-goat-spirit hybrid. So uh, that one's a little different, and uh, there's, there has been a sighting of that particular uh, creature. Uh, I talked to a man named Jason Miller about a decade ago now, and he was uh, over in Goatman, on Goatman Road, which is uh, a state forest in Kewaskum. It's actually South Mill Road. And he was up in a tree uh, in fall, right at dawn, doing some bow hunting. Uh, and he heard this crashing sound off in the distance, uh, thought it was a deer, so he got ready to fire. And when it came out into the clearing, he observed it was a man from the waist up, completely shirtless with a long beard and horns or antlers, uh, the lower half covered in a gray-brown fur, backwards bending legs like some kind of goat or deer-like creature would have, and um, hooves. And uh, incredibly enough, it was speaking English and swearing, uh, saying some you know very unkind things about trespassers. <laughs> so I, I don't think it saw him because it just kept going through the woods. And then uh, when he felt safe to come down, he uh, ran out of the woods and he never went back over there again. All the crazy stuff that happens in Wisconsin, <laughs> I don't doubt that this is one of them. Um, it's definitely an incredible story. Do you believe it, that the goat man exists? Well, I believe that people are experiencing it, and I'm very open to the fact that it uh, does exist. It's one of those things where you're actually going to have to observe it with your own eyes to say for 100% that it exists. Uh, and I always kind of joke that I don't know what would happen if I did see it. Like, is it one of those experiences where you see it and do you lose, you know, all hold on reality, end up in a padded cell or something? So, uh, yeah. I, I'm very open to the possibility this is a phenomenon that people are really experiencing because most of these people who have came to me are very straightforward, very honest, very reliable people. Okay, so be honest. If, if you saw him, if, if you were in that tree and he passed by, what would you do? Uh, well, first I think I would uh, be absolutely astonished because it's just this... It's one of those things where you never believe you're going to see it. Like I could imagine one of those people who always believed in Bigfoot and then it walks across the trail in front of them. You know, it's one of those types of things. Uh, and then um, once I got done with that, I'd probably be scared. And then once I got to the safety of my own home, I'd probably have, I don't know, a piece of cake to celebrate or you something. You have a whole other book to write. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell us about the Kentucky uh, goat man? I know that there they're all over the United States and that um, they all have different forms, but can you expand on the Kentucky one? Yeah, the, the, the Kentucky version of the creature is in Jefferson Town, I believe, or Jeffersonville, I think it's Jefferson Town. It's right outside of Louisville. It's essentially the outskirts of Louisville. And uh, it goes by a few different names. They call it Sheep Man, they call it uh, Goat Man. Uh, and this particular version is noteworthy because it is the version of the creature that has actual real live deaths associated with it. All these goat man stories have a, something similar in that the creature is always regarded as very dangerous. Whereas Bigfoot is kind of regarded as something just wanders through the area. These goat man type creatures, they're always kind of violent and vicious and aggressive or at least somewhat supernatural in the way they behave. So this Kentucky version occupies a bridge, uh, a railroad trestle actually. Uh, it's kind of similar, people kind of equate it to the scene from the f Stephen King film Stand By Me with the their children are trying to outrun the train. Uh, it's a trestle exactly like that. It's extremely long, very high up, and uh, they say if you go out on this trestle, you can see Goatman. And these, this trestle is uh, 
looks obsolete, but in fact it's very, very active. So a lot of times people go out there looking for goat man, they get stuck on the trestle, they jump off, they die, uh, they can't outrun the train, they get hit by the train and die. And this is a problem that's still going on. I believe the most recent incident happened maybe 2016. So it's, it's very dangerous and well, uh, not recommended. My next, my next uh, question to you is, what is the most recent sighting? What is the most recent encounter with the goat man that you know about? Uh, the most recent sighting locally uh, in Wisconsin is a creature that may or may not be goat man, but it certainly fits some of the characteristics. It was um, a little less than 10 years ago. There was a, a woman named Mindy with her teenage daughter was driving uh, close to Holy Hill Basilica in the whole area in Hartford area, okay. uh, north of Milwaukee, late at night. I think maybe around 9 o'clock. It was in fall or winter, so it was uh, dark out. And uh, all of a sudden, this very strange, like four, five foot tall, hairless, bipedal, oval headed thing with backwards bending legs walked out in front of the car and she had to slam on her brake and uh, she didn't get a chance to see its face because she was like inches from hitting this thing and it threw its arms up in front of its face for protection uh, and from the glare of the headlights and after a second when it realized it wasn't hit it ran off the road into the woods and um, her daughter actually commented it looked somewhat extraterrestrial because of that oval shaped head kind of like a classic gray alien from you know alien abduction mm -hmm. uh, stories um, and Mindy had never heard of Goatman. She actually came to me wanting to know what it might be. And when I heard about the legs bending in the wrong direction, maybe that's what it is. Whatever it was, Goatman or not, very bizarre creature. And you said this is like Hart, Hartford, Holy Hill area? Yeah, it was like very, very near to Holy Hill Basilica. The okay. witness lives right around there. So just outside of Aaron in the Kettle Moraine Forest. And there's, there's a lot like, of haunted stories that come out of Holy Hill, right? Yeah, Holy Hill is a bit like a Twilight Zone type area for whatever reason. I mean, other than, you know, the fact that miraculous healings occur there uh, to people who pilgrimage to the site. Uh, people have said they've seen spirits in the woods along St. Augustine Road, which is very near there. Hogsback Road, which we've talked about, is a place where people say Goatman lives. Uh, and there's been uh, all sorts of other cryptid sightings, Bigfoot-like creatures, bear-like creatures that have been seen uh, right near Holy Hill. You're making me scared to go out there and, <laughs> and adventure. The area has an aura. It definitely does, whatever it may be. So. All right. Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And for all you at home, just remember to keep your eyes peeled and your ears open for the goat man.